Hello, my name is Chris and today I'm going to review the Kia Telluride, a new luxury midsize SUV from Kia. I really liked Sorento, so this is going to have to be amazing for someone to fork out the extra cash. Spoiler alert, it is. A vehicle that looks better in person with a choice of nice colors. Kia is showing the world that it is a serious car company based on value, competence and good taste. There is plenty of room and Telluride is a weird name. It also comes in four trims without a large variety in pricing. Telluride starts for $45,000 Canadian in Quebec plus $2,000 of delivery and government levies. Also add a 15% sales tax and that nauseating yearly luxury registration tax which diminishes the middle class in my beloved province. This top end model goes for $54,000 plus the aforementioned craziness. That is an incredible value. I just finished my best of 2019 video and named Kia as the best and upcoming brand. An hour in Telluride confirms my well thought out assessment. This interior is particularly well appointed. The deluxe cloth headline is a nice touch and adds to the refinement. The overall layout of the interior is sumptuous. There is a tasteful design of wood here. High quality. The seats are very good indeed and the leather quality is great. There's plenty of room here to carry stuff or passengers in a cocoon of luxury, the core task of this type of vehicle. Intermediate SUVs are often a similar quality to the brand's mid-size sedan, but this Telluride is way better than Optima. Premium HK sound system, Napa leather, superior interior quality materials, heads-up display, 360 camera, a complete suite of electronic aids, and substantial styling that characterize this all-equipped model. Again, the tasteful design of this interior stands out to me. Combined with its incredible price, I was mesmerized filming it. I test drove the Buick Enclave last week and thought that it was a very good SUV. Though Telluride is probably equal or better in every metric except ride quality and quietness on the highway, though Telluride is quiet too. I think the images speak for themselves. The engine is a V6 that makes 291 horsepower and 262 pounds of torque and does 12.5 liters in the city and 9.6 liters on the highway. The kicker is that Telluride takes regular gas, meaning an instantaneous 15% fuel cost savings compared to premium brands. The 8-speed automatic functions smoothly. A must test drive SUV if you are shopping in the category. Here are my thoughts on the road. Hello car lovers driving the 2020 Kia Telluride, a luxury, non-premium, mid-size SUV. Blah, got a lot out of my mouth. Uh, what about this vehicle? Well, I, I, I'm going to start with the exterior styling. The exterior styling is one of those cases where I found in pictures this vehicle looked kind of boxy. Um, I don't know, I thought there was a lot of right angles. And however, when you're when you're in front of it, uh, it looks pretty good. So for those of you who'd like to see this vehicle, perhaps you might go to the 2020 car show, right? It's in a month and you can go see it live along with its competitors. I always find that's a good way to shop, uh, to go to those car shows. And so that's the exterior. It's another thing, it's got 20 inch wheels, but when you're driving around, it does not affect ride quality. It's got a really good ride quality. We are in the winter. We are in Montreal's shitty roads. They're the most horrible roads perhaps on the planet and it's taking up the bumps gloriously. In fact, I think that's one of the reasons why people, you, you see a lot of these mid-size SUVs in urban environments and you're wondering why do people buy such big vehicles in the city? Well, it's because the roads are so crappy. So this is a good thing about driving a mid-size SUV, that comfort factor. Also the height factor is very good. I have a commanding view of the road. This is a greenhouse here. It's really huge. There's so many windows in this in this vehicle. Like there's so much window. It's you get a lot of natural light. Uh, also in back, I like the load height. It's not too high. Uh, really nice on that level. Lots of room here. Uh, there's a third row. If you want to stuff some kids back there, that's pretty awesome. And if you don't have kids to stuff back there, you can lower those seats and you have tremendous storage. So really fulfills its practical role well. Um, 
A few notes about this interior now, uh, about the high quality of this interior. You are really going up uh, a step up from the Sorrento. Also, I think uh, this, this, this interior design here, this piece of wood that they use here, the color of the wood, it's all sculpted out. It's like a sculpted out piece of wood. Uh, really nice, goes well with this interior, this dark finish, this quality enough dash piece, this brushed aluminum, uh, climate control and, and radio selection. There, there's not really any flaws. There is also a little bit of innovation in terms of like they're right here on the, on, the, on the edges of the seats, there's USB ports for electronic devices for the kids that are in back. Uh, there's USB ports here in the, in the transmission tunnel. Um, nice quality touches like this, this rail here. There's like grips here on, on the transmission tunnel. Good use of that space. It, it, it's got a nice stitching. It's got a nice feel. Nice quality. Quality. Nice quality all around in this interior, I find. Uh, whenever you're going to change lane from left or right, you're going to you have a screen that appears in between the tack and the speedometer, and there's cameras on the uh, rear on the exterior windows, and they kind of like took Honda's idea and brought it up a notch. So all around, an excellent feel and quality. I want to talk a bit about the drivetrain now. Uh, transmission, super good, very good, very assertive. Uh, also, the engine V6. It's the only engine in offer in Canada. It, it, it's, I, I think a V6 for this type of uh, this vehicle, this size is, is the way to go. Um, I'm not sure about the four cylinder turbo that some of its competitors have for this type of vehicle. I think the V6, the smooth power, uh, it's as smooth as the GM I drove last week in the Buick Antlov, and that's one of its direct competitors. Really, Kia at this price, uh, you feel the value. It's not just with their with their cheaper cars. Uh, you've never paid too much for a Kia. Uh, and that's really awesome. That's, it's nice to feel you're getting your money's worth. And I don't care what income level you're at. Uh, I think we, we get taken away sometimes with the, with the brand. Uh, it's true, those, those, those European brands are more stylized, it must be said. Uh, perhaps a little bit more thoughtful in terms of the aesthetic quality. But I know of no one who makes, and that's whether they make 50, 100, 150, or 200,000 dollars a year, nobody hates value. And this Kia Telluride offers tremendous value in terms of its luxurious qualities. So I, I think this is very recommendable uh, vehicle on the lease and on the purchase. Uh, one thing to notice when you're shopping, don't forget to tick that extra warranty when you're shopping Kia's competitors. Kia has the five-year bumper-to-bumper warranty, which is freaking awesome. I think that's the way to go, and uh, it's reassuring. And uh, those are my thoughts. By the way, if you like this video, like it. If you don't like it, don't like it. And if you really like it, if you find the quality of the 4K awesome, if you find uh, my comments uh, complete and thoughtful, if you find uh, the format uh, interesting to listen to. They're not too long, my videos. The, the trend has been going towards longer and longer car videos. I don't make them too long. Uh, well, then you should subscribe and your my videos will appear in your feeds. You can, you can click the bell icon to get notifications. And that is it.